Good morning, and welcome to this Jammies with Jesus on Saturday, um, April 16th. So, oh, my camera's a little wonky. Um, this is sometimes referred to as Silent Saturday. Um, obviously, the, the day following Jesus' crucifixion. And we didn't delve deeply into this, or at least not that I recall the theology of uh, the in-between time between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. But here's a couple texts from uh, First Peter that allude to, that, ha that some, some other traditions have spun out a little bit better than ours, and the Eastern tradition especially. So this is from First Peter, um, third chapter, 19th, or 18th verse. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this um, reference to made a proclamation to the spirits in prison um, is one allusion to. There's one in in Ephesians, I can't chapter quote chapter and verse that says for he ascended, and if he ascended, what does that also mean, but that he descended uh, to the dead. Uh, in Jewish thought, Sheol, which is referenced in Psalms throughout, is, was the place of the dead. Um, I don't know that there's a sense of consciousness that we would kind of think in the 21st century of this. Um, I, I put this under the larger umbrella of a loving God. Um, what would a loving God do? And, and you might say, well, that's rather anthropomorphic, trying to make God into human. But I think Jesus, when he said, if you who are evil, if your child asks you for an egg, would give them a snake. You know, so I do in many ways think that God's love is just so much bigger than I'm capable of even conceiving. So if me and my finite ability to love um, can imagine this, then God can be so much more. And obviously, um, God can do what God will do, and so that's, that's <laughs> undeniable. And yet, um, through the witness of Christ, I see a God who loves us and would like to redeem all of creation and will redeem all of creation, and there will be rejoicing. And um, I, I still have not fully worked through the concept of evil, those who deliberately, intentionally, willfully, continually bring about harm to others, how God works that one out. Um, the closest I've been able to get with that is the understanding that sometimes people who, who receive great trauma and pain in their childhood, um, it seems like there's a fork in the road. You either take a path or, or somehow follow a path that says, I'll never let that happen to anybody else, and you go into a helping profession, um, counseling, social work, um, law enforcement to help the vulnerable, um, or you repeat a cycle that that's somehow been imprinted on you and that you carry that to the next generation. And so we can have great compassion on a child who's gone through trauma and abuse, but if that child unhealed, untreated, um, unloved, then goes on to just do that themselves as an adult, um, there's very much a part of me that says, well, now you're an adult, you should be able to make choices and decisions. But that's where psychologists and many others might say, that's not how we as human beings work in our brains. Theologically, as a pastor, I know that no one is beyond redemption, that, that God is able to redeem everything, and so there's hope. So there's not a sense of, well, this is just the way it is, so that's just the way it's got to be. 
No, not through God's love for us and through a community of faith, a community of people willing to try to um, hold out that forgiveness and hope for, for all people. There's also a reference in the book of Revelations, which it looks like I might not have marked the verse, so I'll not be able to, um, to read it for you. But again, a couple that that just uh, oh that's about the uh, reference to the second death this is in um, revelations 20 then death and hades were thrown into the lake of fire this is the second death um, so much of this is beyond my understanding that i try to keep it simple uh, for me at least, the cosmic stuff I leave in God's hands, the day-to-day, -day, how we are to treat one another, how God has treated us, is one that says um, nobody is beyond God's reach. Uh, so that does go back to the Romans 8, 8 text, that, that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not life, nor death, nor height, nor depth, nor, and it goes on. Um, so on this silent Saturday, on this holy Saturday, um, I hope God gives you a sense of peace, a time of rest and reflection in this between time of the crucifixion yesterday and the expectancy of Easter sunrise resurrection tomorrow. Um, just to, to give it some thoughts. So, um, let us pray. Good and gracious God, thank you for this day and for the many things that we do not understand. We leave those in your hands and yet we do seek greater understanding. So through your Holy Spirit, through the gifts of scripture, through the teachings of those in the last 2000 years trying to make sense of things, uh, we give you thanks for the insights that they can bring to us as well. Uh, we pray for those this day who may be grieving. We pray for those who are recovering from surgeries or tests. We pray for those who are awaiting results from their tests. Help us as a people to show forth your love for all and help us uh, grow in that love so that we can reach um, towards and strive towards that point of even being able to pray for those who persecute us and love our enemies to the point where there will be changes of hearts and love amongst neighbors. This we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, obviously tomorrow morning, Easter Sunday, so for those in the greater Clemson area, We'll have a sunrise service out of the Sanders Farm, um, Riggins Bridge Road, 178 Riggins Bridge Road, if my memory serves me correct, but please double check your directory and the newsletter because that has the correct information in it. That will be at approximately 6.45 a.m. Uh, there's plentiful parking, but the, the ground is a little uneven. Um, so make sure to dress comfortably for the weather situation. Um, and there's, there's an indoor barn, is, does not describe how beautiful it is, but there's an indoor shelter. And then last year the weather was nice enough that we were out on the deck uh, surrounding. So depending on what the weather holds. So that'll be at 6.45, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. will be in the sanctuary. And the 9 a.m. service will be, um, will be Facebook Live. So I encourage anybody who feels comfortable to join us in person and understand totally that those will, who choose to continue to worship with us online. Either way, look forward to having a blessed Easter with all of you. Bye-bye.